Hello everybody, my name is Christopher Donald and welcome to my channel. I'm going to be doing a short video. I'm going to start deconstructing some of uh, the longer processes like wheel throwing into some smaller chunks. Uh, so hopefully focusing on some of these smaller pieces will be helpful to anyone who's having a hard time um, with some of the details of wheel throwing. Uh, to start off with, um, I've got my, my lump is, is wedged into a conical shape and it's got kind of a, a pointed bottom to it so that when I throw this down under the wheel head, this will push air out uh, from the lump and it won't get trapped underneath. And what I want to talk about today is centering. So first off, put your clay in the middle. <laughs> There's concentric circles here and, you know, make sure that it's stuck down really well. It should look kind of like a mushroom cap even before you turn the wheel on. So, and it should be pretty well connected without me doing anything at this point. Um, I don't throw with a pedal. I have a wheel, um, actually one wheel with a lever. This wheel has a switch. And so I just work at different speeds and I don't really change it a whole lot. Um, your centering speed is generally a little bit higher, but on like a kick wheel, it's going to be a little bit lower. It's all about how many revolutions go through your hands in a certain amount of time before you move on. If I'm turning slower, I just move a little slower. If it's turning faster, I can move a little faster. First off, I'm going to use my sponge here to stick down this outer edge of the slat of the lump. And so that's stuck down pretty good. I'm then going to use the sides of my hands using a sponge so I can squeeze water onto the lump. And it's going to be kind of like a, a cupping water to drink motion. So I'm just using those sides. And Jay. Terrible habit. I need to take my watch off every now and then when I'm doing this. There we go. And so this is going to be the motion that I'm using to make sure that this bottom is really stuck. And as part of that process of getting it stuck down, it's also going to cone the clay up. It's going to push it upwards. To get this to go down and help me center the lump, I'm not going to push down onto the cone. I'm going to actually put the cone kind of in the middle of my hand and I'm going to push away. I'm going to push at a 45 degree angle into the wheel head. And that's actually the motion so that it's like this. And by pushing down and kind of at an angle, I'm letting the centrifugal force do the work for me. And that screwing effect is just going to make it center under the wheel. Uh, it often looks like we're coming, like we're, we're pushing it down, but usually you really aren't. And I would consider this centered enough, frankly. The reason why is because unlike what you'll learn a lot of times, um, often people talk about just centering the clay as if it's just one stage. Like there's one time when you center the clay and the rest of it's throwing. But there's actually two points where you center the clay. The first is centering it as a lump, and the second is centering the coil just before you pull for the first time. So I consider this lump pretty centered. And the reason why I don't care if it's too much more centered than this is that for most of you, you're going to throw this off when you open up the floor. So to open the floor, I'm going to let my hand rest on the wheel head here. I'm going to keep my thumb straight. I'm going to push my thumb into the clay and make kind of a, a shallow V shape. Leave that about a half an inch thick. Bracing my hands again, I'm going to curl my fingers in towards my palm. So this motion, this is very strong. So doing this is very strong. This is very weak. So I try and just brace my arms and just do this motion. Again, I'm using a sponge because I can squeeze more water onto it without having to go back to the bucket. And I'm going to generally use a little less water with the sponge than I will without it. Now I need to compress that clay really well. A compressed floor will avoid S cracks later on from drying. Clay is going to shrink about nine to ten percent from wet to dry, and so I want to make sure that this bottom is well compressed. Uh, normally I also use a wooden rib to compress this, but well, uh, oh, okay, I'll go grab it. I'm not going to be lazy. Okay, 
was tempted to be lazy though. All right, so I use a rib like this and also compress the floor with my wooden rib. There we go, I've done it properly. Okay, so for most of you, this, this collar here is probably gonna look more like that when you're done. You're gonna throw it off a little bit as you're opening it up. And so it's important that this is really even and centered and consistent before you do your first pull. And so this is the point where you would do centering the collar. Um, one of my instructors, Marie Wu, was the one that first showed me doing this. And it's a really effective way of kind of controlling your clay. What I'm going to do is allow this to run through my hand like a rope, basically. And I'm going to create a little tunnel. I'm going to create a tunnel with my finger on the inside being one wall, my thumb on the outside being another wall and my fingers on the top being the roof. The only finger that's actually going to try and adjust the clay with pressure is my thumb. The other ones are just kind of going to form a tunnel, and then my thumb is going to move up and down and feel whether or not that that is even. And so that's centering the coil. And it is often going to be easier for you to center the coil then to center the lump. And that's because if this is, say, a pound and a half lump of clay, I've got a good quarter pound that's just the floor of this right now. So when I'm centering that pound and a half lump, I'm centering a whole pound and a half. Once I've opened the floor, now I'm centering like a pound, maybe a little bit more. That effect compounds more clay you're trying to manhandle. So if I'm throwing a five pound lump, I got almost a pound of clay on the bottom. So if you're having a hard time centering that mass of clay, if you can just open the floor, compress your floor, and then center the coil, often this is what's going to be a lot easier for you to do. Right? And then just to show where I would go from here for my first pull, I would probably slow it down a little bit. And then I'm going to squeeze some water on, and then my thumb is going to cut underneath. So my thumb cuts underneath. And that's because a pull is lifting. You must alternate your finger on the inside and your finger on the outside. In the case of my thumb and forefinger, with my first pull, I do one, I do a pull with just one hand, basically, because my thumb is already at the level of the wheel head, and my finger is on, it's at the level of the floor on the inside. So they're already offset like this. And if you can't keep them offset, you can't actually lift the clay. Our natural inclination as kind of mammals is that we want to line our fingertips up. And you will naturally do that when you're throwing. You will try when you're throwing to just get your fingers to be lateral, to line up. But unless you get one under the other, you can't lift the clay. And you're just pushing. And lateral force, when something is spinning, is going to make you go outward and form a bowl. But if I can stay underneath it, and lift, then I can get a pull. So that's my first pull. All right, and that's as far as I'm going to take it for this demo. I've got a couple other videos on throwing cylinders and bowls. You'll be able to see the full process there. Um, for now, yeah, that's a, a great place to stop. So um, thanks for joining me, and um, remember to subscribe so that you get notifications of any new demos, new videos. And I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye.